Let's talk about Istio, the service mesh that can secure inter-microservice communication, collect metrics to visualize your cluster topology, and help you achieve advanced practices like canary deployments. Excited? So am I. Hey guys, it's me, your tech bird, and in this video, we'll see why your microservices need Istio. Before we dive into what a service mesh really is, let's understand how networking works in Kubernetes. Let's say we got two services, A and B, which are both running as separate pods in a Kubernetes cluster. Service A needs to make an HTTP call to service B to get some work done. Assuming we have created a service object for service B, we can simply use the domain name to resolve its IP address. Now, our two services should be able to communicate directly. No problem. This is how service-to-service -service communication usually works in a Kubernetes cluster. In case of Istio or any other service mesh for that matter, things are slightly different. Here, we introduce a sidecar, which is a network proxy beside each one of our microservices. Our network traffic flowing to and from our microservices will flow through their respective proxies. One important thing to remember is that these proxies are transparent to the service they are attached to. In other words, our two services have no idea that a third party is listening in. Well, that just turned dark. On a more serious note, this networking magic is achieved by adding some IP table rules and stuff. We'll probably get into that when we design our own service mesh from scratch. Last thing to remember is that all the major heavy lifting is done by this proxy. Istio, like most service meshes out there, uses Envoy as its network proxy. The Istio daemon is merely responsible for configuring Envoy. I'm sure you're wondering, what's the point of these proxies anyways? Let's start with something that everyone who has worked with microservices can appreciate. Debugging microservices is hard, especially when there is a lot of interdependencies between your services. Figuring out the root cause of a problem requires one to go through tons of logs across several services. That's exhausting. One powerful tool to make our lives easier is distributed tracing. Here, instead of going through the app logs, we check out the lifecycle of a request, like from where did it originate, which all services are affected by it, and which is the service responsible for the error. This adds a lot of context when debugging errors because it greatly narrows down the scope of digging we need to do. Traditionally, we've had to add specialized libraries and instrument our services to achieve distributed tracing. But in a service mesh, because all traffic flows through these intelligent proxies, we get distributed tracing out of the box. All we need to do is forward some headers in each request. On top of that, Istio integrates naturally with tools like Kiali and Yago to make this a very seamless experience. You can use Kiali to visualize your network topology and its health at a glance. Then you can drill down to individual traces in Yago to get an even richer understanding. And distributed tracing isn't the only thing you achieve when it comes to observability. The proxies can collect network metrics too. Istio integrates with Prometheus to give you complete visibility on three out of the four golden signals one must monitor when it comes to microservices. Things like request latency, throughput, and even error rates are available out of the box. You can always use these metrics to trigger alerts or even auto-scale your services. And did I mention you get all of this out of the box? I did say that, didn't I? I'm sorry. It's just too good to be true. Observability isn't the only thing a service mesh helps with. Since all the traffic is flowing through programmable network proxies, you can exercise a lot of control through them. For starters, you can configure these proxies to set request timeouts and automatically retry failed requests. You can also choose from several load balancing algorithms which makes the most sense for your application. You can also implement an interesting pattern called circuit breaking. Let's say you have two applications, A and B. Application B depends on application A to do some important piece of work. Now for some reason, a few replicas of app A are experiencing errors. 
Since app B doesn't know about the affected app A replicas, it still tries to reach them and ends up failing as well. This problem can keep cascading and probably affect an app C, which may be depending on app B. We use circuit breakers to mitigate this precise problem. The idea is to cut off communication to the faulty app A replicas altogether. This way app B can keep communicating with the healthy replicas and continue working without issues. You guessed it, with Istio, you get some really powerful circuit breaking capabilities out of the box. Apart from this, you can implement some really interesting patterns. Let's say you deploy a new version of your application in your production environment. It's possible that you may want to restrict initial access to just the alpha users of your app or just a subset of the total user base. Well, with Istio, you can do that too. The proxies can split traffic based on several parameters, including based on a percentage. So you can start with a 90-10 split, monitor if the new application isn't causing a bunch of errors. If all's good, you can proceed to a larger split like 50-50. You can have as many stages like this as you want. The best part is that if the new version malfunctions, you can simply switch all traffic to the old version and pretend like nothing ever happened. Okay, don't pretend like nothing happened, but you know what I mean. This is what we call canary deployments. The best part is that since the proxy action is transparent to the application running, you can achieve all of this without having to modify a single line of code. There are several tools like Argo rollouts, which work really well with Istio to make this even easier. We'll definitely be covering canary deployments in a subsequent video, so you better make sure you're subscribed. Things don't need to stop at Canary deployments though. Along with the observability features of Istio, you can use traffic shifting to perform A-B tests, create temporary environments for testing your apps and automatically promoting them. The possibilities are endless. Istio has another really interesting benefit, security. Just like other service meshes, Istio can automatically encrypt all network traffic on your behalf using MTLS. All aspects of certificate management are automated by Istio. This helps us get rid of a whole breed of man-in-the-middle attacks. MTLS can also be used for restricting service-to-service -service communication. Istio allows us to control which services can access whom using policies. This can be useful for protecting critical services which handle confidential information. Istio can also help with security on the L7 layer. It can authenticate and authorize users based on JWT tokens. This can come in handy as it promotes decoupling security from application code. This brings service meshes to a wrap. To sum things up, service meshes help us achieve all what we discussed today with some basic configuration and zero code. Without a service mesh, the burden to implement all this would fall on developers. Let me know what aspect of service meshes do you want me to cover next in the comments below. In the subsequent videos, we'll dive deeper into some practical use cases for Istio and see all what we've discussed today in action. Do like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bud here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.